Our planet has a lot of dangerous yet interesting looking animals that we most certainly shouldn't touch even though it's very tempting sometimes. Just because something is cute and adorable or just out of the ordinary doesn't mean it's safe. Some may not appreciate you invading their personal space. From funny looking sea creatures to scary looking bugs, here are the most dangerous animals you should never touch. If you come across the Linomia oblica for the first time, there's a huge chance you'll mistake it for some kind of random plant formation. They actually look pretty fascinating and very plant-like. But don't you ever dare touch them, or you might regret that action instantly and intensely. With these spikes that look like a harmless spiky branch, these caterpillars aren't super friendly to say the least. If someone does make the mistake of touching them, they'll get stung multiple times and the spikes will start to inject venom into the bloodstream. It will cause overclotting of the blood and soon enough bruises will appear on the skin due to internal bleeding along with pain, swelling, headache, and vomiting. The worst part is, one day after the stinging, the victims will start to run out of blood platelets that'll eventually end up taking their lives. Oftentimes, the Linomia oblica rests on a tree branch and looks exactly like a part of the tree, and as soon as you touch it, it will end up causing massive damage to your health before you even understand what's happening. Having a wasp nest in the house is not a fun experience, no matter what kind of wasp it is. But if it's an emerald cockroach wasp nest, you better clean your home furiously and fast. It's a wasp with a metallic blue-green body with a very shiny and attractive exoskeleton that fits its name perfectly. They may look cute, but the effect they have on wherever they build their nest isn't. They are native to Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Pacific Islands, and are mostly seen in hot and humid weather. These wasps don't bite humans, but they cause a much more long-lasting inconvenience. The way they reproduce is scary and super unhygienic. They are actually great neurochemists, with parasitic traits demonstrated earlier in their lives. A female wasp lays her eggs on a cockroach as a host. As the larva grows, it starts eating the cockroach from the inside out. It can also control the roach's mind with its venom. It stings the midsection of the roach, and the toxic venom paralyzes its front legs for more than five minutes, which is just enough time to lay the eggs on its back. This is seriously terrifying. Can you imagine what would happen if they evolve and start controlling the human mind? The results won't be very pleasant, that's for sure. But you can relax, as they're sticking to cockroaches for now. This way of reproduction makes the whole area around its nest super filthy because of the roach's decomposing bodies. The melting body can carry a host of unhealthy pathogens. To be safe from this smelly and unpleasant situation, clean your house thoroughly very often to keep these parasitic, mind-controlling wasps out of your living space. Sea urchins can easily be mistaken for underwater rocks. They're seen most commonly in Hawaiian waters. Surfers, snorkelers, or divers often run into these black, thorny sea creatures. The urchin's outer shell with these sharp, customized weapons should be a clear indication that people should stay as far away from them as possible. Yet still, the urchins are responsible for many accidents, especially with divers with poor buoyancy control. Some accidentally land on the urchins or rest their hands on them when they're really tired. The moment someone touches the creature, its thorny spines will quickly transfer from their back to the person's hand. The ink from the spikes and some tips can remain stuck in the skin even after months. Because of their notorious ink, sea urchins are often called the Hawaiian tattoo. It may not be deadly, but it sure is a painful experience. These kinds of accidents can easily be avoided by just not touching the dangerous creature. Divers should follow proper diving protocols and know their limits before jumping into the water. Urchins move very slowly along the algae on the reef, so it's pretty easy to spot them and stay away from them. In some parts of the world, a certain kind of sea urchin is considered a delicacy. How the experienced divers harvest these urchins with proper precautions is truly fascinating to watch. You can see the harvesting videos on YouTube as well as many other interesting videos on our channel, so don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss any of our videos. Ants can't possibly cause serious damage to humans, right? Wrong. The harvester ants cause so many allergic reactions in the human body that it's hard to even list them all. Symptoms include sneezing, wheezing, hives, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, sudden anxiety, dizziness, difficulty breathing, chest tightness, and itching or swelling of the eyes, lips, or other areas of the face, rapid loss of blood pressure, fainting, and to top it all off, a coma. That said, they are rarely fatal and mostly seen as a nuisance to humans, but there's no debate that nobody is ever looking forward to getting bitten by one of them. These ants can grow hives with colonies of almost 12,000 workers per colony in only five years. So if left unchecked, your home sweet home will soon be filled with tiny offenders, and the rest is a story of severe discomfort to you and your family's lives. The harvester ants have the ability to sting multiple times, unlike the other fellow stingers like honeybees. They are often mistaken for fire ants, but they don't even come close to the venom intensity of harvester ants. 
If you're just an ill-fated person and you do get stung by them, apply ice to the area to prevent and control swelling. But if you're allergic to it and you see symptoms appear as it happens with people who are allergic to the bee sting, call your doctor immediately. We've all seen snails, right? The slow, sluggish thing with a hard shell? Well, no matter how many you've seen in your life, I bet you haven't seen this unusual cone-shaped snail, and you should be glad you didn't. A visit with the cone snail is not very pleasant, to say the least. It can be extremely dangerous, just because of the sole fact that the symptoms of the bite can take from minutes to days to appear. They're pretty simple to look at, with a cone-shaped shell, head, and just some tentacles. There are about 500 kinds of cone snails. They are native to the Indian and Pacific Oceans, the Caribbean and Red Seas, and along the coast of Florida. Most of them aren't really that aggressive, apart from the ones that eat fish. The cone snail hunts its prey by extending out of the shell and injecting rapid-acting venom from a dart-like tooth. The toxins of the cone snails of the Indo-Pacific region are the most potent and harmful. These snails should not be messed with. If you accidentally come into contact with one and get bitten, the best thing you can do is keep calm and avoid excessive movement. In severe cases, there can be muscle paralysis, blurred vision, and respiratory paralysis and can even be fatal. As soon as someone gets bitten, get medical attention, and don't be surprised if they need CPR. In fact, artificial respiration can be the difference between life and passing away in this case. No matter what you do, do not cut open an open wound, apply suction, or use a tourniquet. Leave the treatment to the professionals. It's not just obvious ocean animals like octopuses that can be deadly. Sometimes danger can hide in plain sight. Many divers have experienced a sting or burning sensation from touching the fire coral by mistake. These bright yellow and orange and seemingly harmless corals contain nematocysts. Some of them have sharp edges with toxins that can cause lacerations and abrasions. How much discomfort the coral will cause depends on the amount of exposure to the toxins, the extent of the abrasion for a hard coral, and the person's other health conditions and sensitivities. Usually, touching the fire corals causes skin reactions such as red welts, blisters, and considerable itching. It can also cause inflammations and secondary infection with a very slow healing process. Unfortunately, accidental touch with these stinging corals is pretty common, as the divers often mistake the fire corals for common seaweed. These corals are usually found at depths of up to 120 feet in the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans, and the Caribbean Sea. They are the distant cousins of the Portuguese man of war. Pufferfish is another ocean resident that you might want to steer clear of. It's another animal that looks harmless, but isn't. Pufferfish are commonly known as blowfish. Belonging to the Tetraodontidae family, they are carnivorous and can grow up to 3 feet. Pufferfish can be of many kinds, such as Congo, Dwarf, Golden, Red Eye, Fahaka, and so on. One thing that all these fish have in common is that they all have many spikes on their skin that are extremely dangerous, and you should never touch these animals, especially when they're puffed up. If you absolutely have to touch them, make sure to put on a heavy-duty glove. The pufferfish carries a kind of toxin called tetrodotoxin that can be fatal to humans, so if you get too excited and touch them without having gloves on, your hands can get seriously injured and in the worst case scenario, you can pass away. The interesting fact is, even with the high threats that these fish possess to humans, people still like to have them in their home aquarium. The pufferfish is a marine animal, so they have to be kept in saltwater aquariums, but the good news is, there are also freshwater species that you can put in your normal aquarium. People also consider the blowfish a delicacy in some parts of the world. Specifically in China, Korea, and Japan, this deadliest animal is considered a delicious treat. But if you're anything like me, you'd probably stick to your salmon for now. Would you like to have the blowfish as a fancy and risky dinner? Let us know in the comments below. Sometimes the appearance of some animals should be a clear indication to stay as far away from them as humanly possible. In this case, we're talking about the crown of thorns starfish. This dangerous number comes from Australia and the Indo-Pacific. But these days they are getting more and more common in other parts of the world such as the tropical and subtropical regions of East Africa, the Red Sea, and even in South America. These starfish have long sharp spines or thorns all over their body, and if you ever come across them, no matter what you do, do not touch them. They carry a poison called saponin, and touching them can lead to severe stinging, pain, and swelling. The crown of thorns usually stay in the coral reefs. They feed on branching and other corals such as porites, soft corals, sponges, and encrusting organisms like algae. Since they mostly stay on the coral reefs, divers and swimmers sometimes accidentally end up touching them. According to them, the parts of the spine left behind in the fingers and hands can be felt years after the incident. The extreme pain, swelling, numbness, tingling, and nausea can last for days on end. The Indian red scorpion can be just as dangerous as the people with the astrological sign. Native to India and Nepal, these scorpions don't usually mess with people unless people mess with them. 
but if someone accidentally steps on them or shows any kind of aggressive behavior, they'll really regret what comes next. The small crustacean can be reddish orange or dull brown and anything in between. They have a distinctive dark gray ridge and granulation with small pincers, a thickened tail, and a large stinger. The most distinctive feature of any scorpion, including the Indian red scorpion, is its fluorescent appearance under black light. This is probably why the curious children are the most common victims of the poisonous insect. Their venom can cause severe pain at the sight of the sting, vomiting, sweating, breathlessness, and alternating high and low blood pressure and heart rate. The venom causes complications in the pulmonary and cardiovascular systems, leading to pulmonary edema, which can be fatal. The clinical fatality rates from the Indian red scorpion sting range from 8 to 40%. These poisonous crustaceans are surprisingly kept as pets. They're also used in medical research. The use of their venom containing potassium channel blocking peptides looks promising in the treatments of autoimmune disorders. The toxins are used in dermatology, cancer treatment, and as an anti-malarial drug as well. So despite their dangerous nature, they can come in handy in many medical cases. Jellyfish are dangerous in general, and the pain a jellyfish sting can inflict is excruciating. If handled carefully, most smaller jellyfish can be scooped up with fingers in dire situations. Touching a jellyfish no matter the size isn't something anyone should do unless they have no other options. But when it comes to the Irukandji jellyfish, touching them even barely is the worst idea ever. Don't underestimate the power of Irukandji jellyfish just because of its size. Their sting can cause fatal brain hemorrhages, and it sends 50 to 100 people to the hospital each year. If someone does get stung by them, the first thing they should do is remove the tentacles stuck on the skin, pour vinegar in the place of the sting, and take a painkiller because it causes severe localized pain. The person that's stung usually gets confused and agitated trying to remove the tentacles and eventually becomes unconscious. There's a huge possibility of respiratory failure and cardiac arrest that can lead to a person passing away because of the sting. In order to avoid this excruciating and potentially deadly situation, the experts advise us to avoid their habitats altogether. Some even consider them the most lethal creature known to mankind, so staying as far away from them as possible is probably the best possible decision you can make. A honeybee sting is terrifying as it is, but when it comes to the Africanized honeybees, the pain is unbearable. These are getting more and more common in the United States these days. They were first seen in South America in Brazil in the 1950s. Many believe that the Africanized honeybees are more dangerous than the typical European honeybees. That's not exactly the case, but what makes the situation worse is the fact that there's currently no anti-venom for the sting. So avoiding them and not getting stung is your best bet here. If you're allergic to bee stings, then carry self-injectable adrenaline with you at all times. If you see one of these flying pieces of agony coming at you full speed, run and take shelter covering your face so you don't get airway stings. If by any chance you do get stung, remove the stinger immediately and clean that area with soap and water. To help with the excruciating pain, apply an ice pack and take pain and anti-tick medications. But if the symptoms are more severe and not just confined to local reactions, which is usually the case with victims who had multiple stings, then rushing them to the hospital is the best idea. In the emergency room, they can give intravenous fluids, oxygen, cortisone medicine, epinephrine, as well as medications to open up the breathing passages. The loris are the cutest animals ever, and they can lure anyone into touching them. But a bite of this cute animal can actually kill you. They are the only primates that have venoms, and needless to say, you should never touch them no matter how they tempt you. Self-control is the best control, and trust me, you do not want to be the victim of this venom. The slow loris collects it by locking its inner elbow, the brachial organ. In order for the toxin to be released from the arm gland, saliva is required. Apart from this very limited information, not much else is known about the chemical nature of the toxin. What we do know is that a bite from the slow loris is no joke. Their bite can and will cause burning of the tongue and throat, hypotension, muscle convulsions, and heart and respiratory problems. So if you think you're having a great time with your cute friend by tickling it and it slowly starts to raise its hand above its head, well, you're not. The loris is raising its hands not because it's enjoying it, but because it's trying to access the venomous gland on its elbow. You can be sure that the moment it gets the chance, it'll sink its teeth deep into your skin with an excruciating bite. So do yourself a favor and step back while you have the chance. The giant titan beetle is one of the deadliest animals you should never touch. It's the largest beetle in the world, and its size and looks alone should be enough reason not to mess with it. The titan beetle can grow up to 7 inches long with a jaw that can easily snap a wooden pencil into two, so tearing human flesh shouldn't take it much longer either. The incredible strength of its jaw comes from the energy reserve in the pupa stage. This energy is typically used to fly just enough distance to find a mate. You see, because of its enormous size, they can't really fly as much, and so they've developed a technique to make the flights easier. 
The giant titan beetle first crawls up to a tree and then jumps from there to make the takeoff easier. The strong jaws and legs of the wild insect are a deadly combination. The good news is, the titans usually warn people by making a hissing sound before using their huge jaws to bite attackers, and don't attack unless provoked. So if you don't want to lose a chunk of your flesh, don't mess with them. The Selenodon looks very similar to rats, but they are far more dangerous. The reason is in their name itself. Selenodon is a Greek name that means grooved tooth. They use the grooves on their teeth to inject venom quite similar to snakes. They are the only mammals that have this ability. The most amazing fact about them is that they diverged from all other mammals 76 million years ago. To put it in simple words, they were way ahead of the huge and mighty dinosaurs by creating their own evolutionary niche that allowed them to outlive them through the cataclysm, invasion, and destruction. Even after the gigantic dinosaurs were wiped out, they were roaming forests of the Caribbean islands in Cuba and still are. What makes them more interesting is how similar they look to rodents, and many people often confuse them as large rats. It actually belongs to an order of mammals that includes shrews and moles. They are one of the oldest mammals on Earth and the only mammal with venomous teeth. The younger ones are born blind and without hair, but that doesn't make them any less dangerous than their adult counterparts. This little creature is the ultimate example of endurance that's running on Earth for 76 million years. It's also famous as the last survivor, a name that suits it perfectly. What do you think? Do you have a better name for them? Let us know in the comments below. Remember Perry the Platypus from the famous show Phineas and Ferb, fighting the evil Dr. Doofenshmirtz? The feud between the two made the show entertaining, but they left one important detail out. Platypuses produce venom and use it against threats. The platypus has venom glands connected to hollow spurs in their hind legs where they make the venom. They usually produce it during mating season. They are one of the very few living mammals that can do that. But it seems like the tarsal spurs aren't uniquely platypus characteristics. Many archaic mammals have them, so the platypus simply inherited this characteristic from its antecedents. They're just the only ones that still have this once common mammalian characteristic, and they're used as models to observe non-therian mammals and their venom delivery properties. The venom that the platypus produces can paralyze small animals, but isn't exactly lethal to humans. Maybe that's why you've not seen Perry use it on his arch nemesis. That doesn't mean it's completely harmless, though. It causes sharp pain, and sometimes the pain is so intense it can incapacitate a human. At the very least, it will cause swelling that develops rapidly around the wound, and then spreads far from the wound. The pain can turn into long-lasting hyperalgesia that can last from days to weeks. The scary part is, according to a clinical report from 1992, even morphine can't help with the persistent intense pain. The blue glaucus looks exactly like some kind of mystical creature, and the name blue dragon fits it perfectly. It's actually a type of nudibranch called a glaucus atlanticus. A TikToker discovered it on his relaxing tour to Stradbroke Island in Queensland, Australia, and decided to make a clip on it. He picked the creature up with the tip of his fingers, made the clip, and released it back into the ocean. According to him, it moved like a Pokemon. Don't get encouraged by him, though. Don't get too carried away with their beautiful and mystical appearance. Touching the blue dragon can be a huge mistake. The blue dragons have a very interesting way of singing their prey. They collect toxic chemicals from their prey and store and concentrate them in their stinging cells into their skin. They use the stored stinging cells to sting anyone and anything when they are touched or threatened. A sting from these tiny blue dragons can be even more potent than the notorious Portuguese man of war. Get stung by the dragon and you'll instantly start suffering from nausea, pain, vomiting, acute allergic contact dermatitis, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So do yourself a favor and don't try to touch them. Some beautiful things in the world are best observed from a safe distance. There's no way for a non-expert to distinguish between a vibrant purple flower and the flamboyant cuttlefish at the first glance. They are mostly found in the Indo-Pacific waters around Australia and New Guinea, along with various islands in the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. They are dark brown in color with overlapping patterns of white and yellow, luring anyone to touch them. But the moment you give in to the temptation, you'll be very sorry that you did. These flowers of the ocean are extremely toxic, and they are one of the only three venomous cephalopod species. They can be as fatal to humans as the blue-ringed octopus. The reassuring fact about this is they rarely come into contact with humans, and we sure prefer it that way. The flamboyant cuttlefish injects venom through their spines. There are sacs filled with toxins situated at their dorsal spine to deliver the toxin. If the cuttlefish considers someone a threat, they stab it with their dorsal spine and release the toxins. They have the uncanny ability to change the pattern, texture, and color of their skins to blend into the environment, so it's hard to spot them instantly. These wild animals should be left undisturbed in their own habitat, and you should steer clear of them at any cost. The Brazilian wandering spider is the world's most venomous spider. 
They are native to the forests of Costa Rica, Colombia, Peru, Brazil, Paraguay, and some other parts of Southern Africa. The most venomous of the bunch was delivered to south of London in a big pile of bananas. The spider was trapped by the specialist while it was trying to escape after a bit of chef in Somerset. The spider was hiding in bananas delivered to his pub and left a leg and an egg sack full of thousands of baby spiders behind when it was captured. Thankfully, he was saved by the anti-venom administered by a nearby zoo. They identified the arachnid by a picture the chef took before passing out. The Brazilian wandering spider gets its name from the habit of moving around on the jungle floor at night for food. They prefer dark and moist hiding places, such as piles of wood, garages, cupboards, shoes, and most terrifying of all, heaps of clothes. This spider in particular has been named the most venomous spider in the world for possessing the most active neurotoxin venom by the Guinness Book of World Records. The next time you go to fold your pile of laundry, be careful about these infiltrators. These water bugs are the most dangerous bugs you can ever come across, and no matter what you do, do not touch them. These insects can be found in certain parts of India, and most of their species are quite large, the smallest being about 0.75 inches. These bugs usually come out after a rain in great numbers. If anyone touches them or tries to smash them with their bare hands, the result can be this highly disturbing skin condition. They carry a kind of virus that instantly infects anyone that comes in contact with them, and it spreads rapidly throughout their body. Despite their seriously scary nature, the amazing yet disturbing fact is, these dangerous bugs are a popular food item in many Southeast Asian countries, much like the sea urchins. Some, however, believe the picture of the infected is not authentic and is a product of great Photoshop skills. The picture has been circulating the internet for months and has caused a great debate on its authenticity. Do you believe it's real or just a huge prank? Share your views in the comments below. Looks can be deceiving, and what better way to prove that than the blue-ringed octopus? This particular breed of octopus is one of the prettiest and most dangerous animals in the ocean. They have these beautiful, vibrant blue rings on them that invite people to take a closer look. But the moment humans come in contact with the blue ring octopus, their lives get in grave danger. These octopuses carry highly toxic venoms in their saliva. When they bite into their prey using their beak, the saliva instantly paralyzes it. The toxin, called TTX, is strong enough to kill a fully grown human with just one milligram of it. And the terrifying fact is, there's no antidote so far. If treatment is not given immediately, the toxin will gradually paralyze all the muscles, and not long after, the person won't be able to breathe anymore. The blue ring octopus can inject the toxins with a tiny cut that will shed just one drop of blood at best. These deadly animals don't produce the toxin themselves. They actually store a specific kind of bacteria in their salivary glands, and the bacteria produces the toxin called TTX. So if you come across a brightly colored octopus on your dive, you should never touch it, and stay as far away from it as possible. Have you ever seen or touched any of these? Which one do you think is the most dangerous? Let us know in the comments below. Like always, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comments section. To keep up to date with all of our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on to never miss a thing. Until next time, do take good care of yourself.